Our CS 2024 coverage is made possible by Thermaltake, Azus, XPG, Alphacool, Cable Mod, and Patriot. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm Stuart from GGF, and we're here at CS 2024, and we are at Thermaltake again, taking a look at some more of their products. Now, over here, we have their custom water cooling gear. Now, this isn't their full range. They're not going to have uh, everything they have available on display. They're just going to have their new items now if you focused on some of our Com uh, Computex uh, coverage we did take a look at their fittings there now these are out and readily available now these come in the matte black the black and chrome and then the all white once again i'll get some b-roll on that so you can see i'm really digging these matte black they look really good um, just the overall uh, color to them and i actually haven't used them in a build i've used the white i've used the silver but not the uh, matte black now for these fittings they pretty much do everything we need. We have the extenders, we have the 45s, we have the 90s. One thing I do have a bit of a gripe with with Thermaltake is they only come in 16 millimeters. Now these ones here, so the only ones for your tubing, the outer diameter is 16 millimeters OD. I wish they did uh, more in the 12s and I wish they did more in the 14s. So that's something, some feedback I would like to give them. And another thing, especially when building my mod build for this event, is their uh, extenders. When it comes to water cooling, you can get uh, static extenders or rotary extenders. Now normally, rotary extenders just has a rotary bit at the bottom of the thread, and that just helps you uh, when you're building your system, installing those fittings. But what Thermaltake has done is they've added a rotary at the female end of the extender. And so what happens is when you screw in two extenders, you have rotary on the male thread, rotary on the female, rotary on the male thread again, then rotary. So you have two, two rotaries going back to back. So when you go to tighten these, you're literally just spinning the two rotaries. And it's very hard to actually grip the actual rotaries to get them tight. Now, if you're doing a custom mod build where this is in a hard to reach place or it's going through a panel, through a pass-through wall, it's really impossible to get those two rotaries to tighten. So I fed this back to Thermaltake. They probably don't need a rotary on the female end. They just need a rotary on the male end. So hopefully they can do some adjustments for those. Now, another thing we want to look at are their new radiators. Now, these are their Pacific SR series. Now, they come, these come in the black and snow. I wouldn't really say these are black. These are more of a you know, like a dark uh, titanium, a dark gray or something. Now, the advantages of these is you can actually pull off these uh, side covers. I might pick up the white one, might make it a bit easier. You can uh, unscrew these side covers, which is always nice. You can paint them, you can do whatever you want. Vinyl wrap them would be nice. The only thing is the logo, I can feel that is a little bit perforated. So even if you paint that or vinyl wrap it, you're definitely gonna see that. So in saying that, to make these like mod friendly, you would have to sand that anyway, and you're probably gonna destroy that cover when you do that. So they probably needed to give you their logo separately with a sticker or just not have the logo at all. I'll feed that back to them as well for that. Now these only come in the slim, that is 30 millimeter thick radiator. And as I can see, these are in 240 and 360. I would really like them to bring them out in thicker, say the 40 millimeters and also the 60, because my build, I wanted white radiators, but I wanted uh, thicker units than the slim ones. So I had to paint them myself. So it'd be really good if they brought these out in thicker units in the white. Now, another item I want to look at, I didn't even know Thermaltech were doing this. They have a M.2 SSD cooler. Now it's in the system. It's going to be hard to see. I'll throw some B-roll on. Now this is a 2280 length SSD cooler and they do claim that it'll run your SSD load at 60 degrees uh, or less. Now there's not much more I can talk about that. It's got a little fan on it. I don't know what size that fan is. That looks super, super small. Um, it's something that looks like a 10 millimeter or a 15 millimeter fan. I can't really tell how noisy it is because there are some fans in the system as well, but it is nice to see Thermaltake uh, reaching out into that area as well. Moving on to some of the Thermaltake fans. Now, as you can see, the main shift that Thermaltake has gone with is everything here is now daisy chainable. Even their high performance tough fan, this is the EX12 slash 14, so obviously 12 being the 120s, 14s being the 140s, and that's their Pro, and these are all daisy chainable. Now, these have some crazy good static pressure. I don't remember what these are, but these are their uh, radiator performance fans. And one thing they've uh, sort of tweaked and fine-tuned is the mounting pads where these daisy chain together. These have been enlarged a bit more, whereas the original 
uh, Swarfan EX, when you're putting in, in your system, if they're a little bit off, you tighten one screw a little bit too much, one fan might turn off. You need to back that screw off, uh, tweak it a little bit just to get them all to line up. With the new design, uh, I was told you can have the fans so far off axis that they will still work. So that's pretty good that they've adjusted that. And once again, all these fans still have the uh, swappable blades. So I can pop this one out. It's actually a little bit, a little bit hard. So that pops out like that. And you actually do get the reversible blade in the three pack. Um, I'm pretty sure if, if they do come with a single pack, I'm not sure you'll get that as well. But that is the only brand of fan that I know that has the full set of blades that are reversible and then they come with the standard flow uh, blades as well. Every other company, you have to either buy the standard flow design or you need to buy your reverse flow design. So you need to calculate, do you need four or five standard flow do you need four or five reverse flow for your system and you need to purchase accordingly. So it's really nice that Thermaltake give you the extra blades in the box as well. Now the main difference here with this fan set over here, once I said earlier in my previous video at the start, they've gone with that hydrangea blue and once again they have blue fans to match that as well. So if you're going with the hydrangea blue setup, you can do the, bl uh, the blue chassis, the blue fans, the blue all-in-one cooler, and they even have the blue memory, which we're gonna have a look at now. Thermaltake have been doing their memory for quite a few years now. I remember back in the DDR4 days, but now we have their full suite in DDR5, and this goes up to 8,000, so that is good. And now we have a heap of colors. Basically, every color you can get a Thermaltake case in. The only one I'm not seeing here is that yellow uh, bumblebee we covered in a previous video but you have the racing green, the turquoise, we even have gold, we have red. I don't even think they will take to any red cases, but it doesn't mean you have to use one of their cases. You can have a red case from a different brand. If you want some red memory, Thermal Take has that covered for you. So the one on the right is the Tough Ram D5, and the set on the left is the Tough Ram XG D5. I personally think the one on the left looks a little bit sleeker, looks a little bit cleaner. Of course, it comes in the white, the black, and it comes in their brand new, once again, their blue, they are hydrangea blue, and you can do that full setup for that. Now moving on to, I won't cover any more on the memory, moving on to their PSUs. Not much of a huge difference here. One thing I will say from uh, CES uh, last year, the main difference is now all of their PSUs now support the ATX 3.1 instead of the 3.0. If you're wondering 3.1, the only difference is the uh, revamped modified connector. It's been improved when you put your connector in. It is solid. It doesn't have that bit of wriggle room. It doesn't move. That is the difference between a 3.1. So these are all 3.1 certified. And then the other difference between this, uh, I'll just focus on these two here. CS last year, this was their highest uh, capacity, uh, smallest uh, unit. This was the SFXL 1000 watt, and it was gold rated. So that one's now old. That one has been replaced by uh, this bad boy here. This is the SFX. Now this is a non-L. So the SFXLs are a little bit bigger. This is standard SFX, 1000 watt, same capacity. And this is uh, 80 plus platinum rated. So that is a beast. So this is the same as their other SFX, the 750, same as the 850. So you can go all the way up to 1000 now, whereas previously you had to go up to the 1000, you had to go up to slightly larger SFXL. And then once again, with that hydrangea blue theme, we have the blue PSU as well. Now, I wasn't joking earlier when I said they literally have everything in blue to celebrate their 25th anniversary. The memory, the case, the all-in-one coolers, the fans, the PSU. If you like this blue, you can do a full-out, decked-out blue theme for your setup. But anyway, I think that's it for this video. I've got one more to go, and I'll see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.